It's finally here. Fort Farms. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And a brand new series here on the newly released Court Farms. Uh, we are going to be doing a hopefully very long term series on this far or on this map. Uh, this is one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, I put off doing series on other uh, British maps because I just wanted to save it for this map. Is very anticipated for me um, and I know the community as a whole so man I spent two and a half hours driving around just driving around this map the day it was released uh, just trying to like get ideas of what we wanted to do for this series and yeah so I think think uh, I figured it out I figured out what how we're gonna go about this series we're gonna do a pretty hardcore series here um, playing it as a more of a let's play with a little bit of maybe a little bit of role play here and there um, but we are a first generation farmer uh, we have sold everything we own um, and we have moved from the United States over to Britain um, and over to Banwell or I think it's Somerset in Banwell. I think that's what that's how it how it is. Um our law our twice removed relative uh is or didn't have any uh next of kin. Uh he passed on and uh we were the next we we're the next up. That's how close we were. And uh here we are. We uh, we have ourselves a farm, so um, we're gonna be kind of running a calf heifer farm here to start. We are taking in cows, um, young cows, all the way from just a few weeks old to around nine months. Uh, we're gonna raise them and then we're gonna um, return them to the farms that we take them in from. We're mostly working closely with uh, Court Farm itself. The farmer there, he is growing his uh, cattle operation, but doesn't have the room for it. So he's kind of took us in, and uh, he is. You know, we're going to be facilitating his cows, his calves, and his heifers for him. So uh, we're going to raise them all the way up to nine months, and then about that time, they're going to be able to be bred and uh, start milking again once they give birth. So. That's going to be kind of the beginning part of the series. It's how we're going to kind of get our start. Um, when we sold everything off, we got about two, or we got just two hundred thousand dollars from everything we own. Um, so that's what we started with. Uh, we took out a loan of two hundred and thirty-five thousand to buy the farm itself. So what we have right now is. Just this piece here. This is the two hundred thirty-five thousand. We had to pay two hundred twenty-four dollars out of our pocket, but uh, two hundred thirty-five thousand for the farm itself and two uh, grass pastures. Um, and then we got in contact with a few local people, and we are actually going to be leasing um, some ground from them. Um, so three feet least fields this one is pretty much part of the farm itself but it uh yeah it's just uh it, it's right down a lane here and it's uh pretty much connected but we are leasing that or renting it i guess renting the ground um from them so um well what do we have here on the farm so we currently have twenty six thousand dollars that's all we have to our name right now um, all of the equipment was bought from the 200,000 that we own, um, as well as the lease fields. So we have ourselves a, um, Land Rover Defender. Can't have a British farm without a Land Rover, right? Um, and then we have our cattle trailer here. It's an I-4 Williams. Only holds about three head of cows. Uh, so it's not anything huge. We have our main farmhouse here. We are on Elmcroft Farm. 
so we're not going to be playing on court farm uh, just trying to do something a little bit different uh, you know there's going to be a lot of different series on this map because like i said it's very it's been very anticipated so um yeah so then we have our uh our cattle barn here a little lean-to shed here which i might end up putting some uh cow igloos in uh, just to give them a little roof over their head um have our main storage uh, barn here. That's pretty much the only storage barn we own. Slurry pit. And then over here is our shop. It's a small shop, workshop here. Uh, got our bell wrapper in there. A grain silo that doesn't work right now. Actually does work, but we're playing it as it needs some work to get that up and going. We don't have any arable land at the moment anyway, so uh, this is a manure bunker, so once we kind of muck out the pens, we can move it into that. This is a sheep pasture, uh, which we will be doing some sheep eventually. A silage clamp. I plan on just doing silage bales at the moment. And uh, yeah, our equipment here. So we have an old uh, cloth mower here it's about 1.9 meters so not very big at all um our massey 690 turbo that is kind of our main workhorse tractor and then a international 745 xl with the mp lift front loader we got ourselves a Kloss rollant 66 baler that only does 125 meter bales Got ourselves a hay bob, and the only piece of brand new equipment is this Goville uh, bale handler claw thing there. So, um, I think I missed something. Yeah, so we got our Pottinger rake there too. Um, this is actually the third time recording this intro. I've been messing with my audio. You guys know I do it a lot. Um, but I'm trying to get it where there's not as much background noise. Um, drives me nuts. Um, so I finally did some digging into YouTube videos and all that stuff, and uh, I'm messing with noise suppression filters and noise gates. That means that I do have to kind of project my voice a little bit more. I'm a very soft-spoken person, as it is, so kind of when I trail, like, end my sentences, my voice level goes down a lot. And that means that the microphone doesn't pick it up. It cuts it out with the noise gate. I had it too high. I reduced it a little bit. Hopefully that still doesn't pick up background. But for now, yeah, that's going to be how it is. Hopefully this audio is good in this video. Like I said, this is a third time recording this video. so Or this intro. So there it has been work done. Because this essentially is the third episode. But it's not. This is, this is still the first episode. <laughs> Um, so we have gotten a lot of grass done. Um, we are actually into September already. Usually you start in August, but yeah, we're into September. So we got to get some, uh, some grass baled. Um, this main pasture here is going to be our silage bales here. Coming down this lane to this big least ground. Um, this is going to be some hay bales. We went over it. We mowed it. We raked it, and then we used our hay bob to go down the windrows. The hay bob's nice because it turns the grass like it's tedding it, but it keeps it in the rows. So it's kind of a little bit different way of doing hay, right? Oh, and then we have our old bale trailer here, which is going to be getting a lot of use. Um, and then if we kind of just run over here, we have another hay field, this other pasture piece right here that's part of the farm is also in hay so we're going to be selling some of these hay bales because we need the money and that's all the equipment we have so we don't have any um harvesting equipment or anything right now so that is that's all we got so we're going to be mainly focusing on the cattle right now we got to get some cattle in uh we talked to the to the farmer that uh, runs the uh, runs Court Farm, and he has some cattle ready for us. We just got to go pick them up. Um, we do pay an initial price for them, and then when we 
drop them off, that's kind of when we get our main payment. So. So yeah, that's the farm. Uh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, so we need to get this mower unhooked and get some bales going. We'll probably start with the silage bales. Where do we want to put this mower right now? We'll just set it. We'll back it into the manure pit for now. We don't have any manure as it is. We have to order it. Oh, oh. We'll just put. A little bit of mud right there. I need to unfold it. Okay. Alright. I'm not sure about the mud system. I'm not going to lie to you. Really not sure about it yet. I don't like how dirty it gets the tractors. I mean, I don't mind a little bit of dirt, but if it did it, like, less in intensely, like, it's just so... F it's the stuff dirty so quick. It's a cool mod, but yeah, it's I'm not sure that it's right for right for me yet. Maybe I can go in and tweak it a bit. Yeah, kind of the uh, the basis of this series is kind of hardcore, so we're gonna be. going to be uh, grinding it out to get the stuff done, really, so. We are in hard economy, obviously. Makes sense, right? Bales here. Mace Plus, like, I think I know, I mentioned that. We do have Mace Plus. This bale are so dirty already, just from going through that small mud puddle. Kind of hard to see these bales or these rows right now because the grass has increased a stage. Definitely took some time to cut these uh, fields. That's for sure. No auto load. Everything's by hand. By, by tractor, I guess. We're not like going to be using super strength to move the bales. Things going to be manually, manually done, so. I like this little tractor, though. Good one. One I've been waiting to use. I mean, there's been a lot of equipment that I've been waiting to use because of not wanting to waste a series on a different map when I'm looking forward to this one so much, so. We're going to try and progress pretty quickly in this series as well. So, probably won't be doing like tons of time lapses or montages or anything because... Yeah, we want to get through quite a bit of work in each episode. I'm going to try and keep every episode to a half hour. Or around that, I suppose. Hundred and twenty five meter bales is gonna be a lot of bales to pick up, but three day seasons, that's one thing I should mention. We're gonna try and keep it on five times speed as well. If we're unable to keep up, then we're unable to keep up. Um, means we're gonna need to prioritize getting bigger equipment type of thing. Um, so 
I like to keep everything kind of as realistic as possible on this channel, as you all know if you've been here. Well, obviously I don't have the insight as to what, as to the realism of, like, farming in the UK is like, opposed to the US. Well, I didn't cut this little area. I need to get that cut. No, we'll do this row first, then we'll come back for that end row. But, I mean, we'll try and keep it as, as close to realistic as we can. Tried to start at the at the lowest level we could, you know, uh, with the most with the minimum most minimum equipment we could. Um, is I don't know the way I like to play is that I like to have a goal, right? So if you have a goal, you can you can kind of like stretch your series more. Um, set little goals, reach those goals, it just kind of makes the game more rewarding, I suppose. And keeps you interested longer, in my opinion. So. I think we'll probably actually get these get this baled, and then we'll actually load these and wrap these, and then we'll start working on the hay. Maybe. Might need some hay to feed... to feed the cows that we need to get at some point today. We need to take a break and go get those. I've set up a, like, animal dealership trigger over at, um... At Court Farm, at the at the cow barn, to kind of simulate picking up cows from there and bringing them back, type of thing. And even though we're going to be like selling them, it's to you know to simulate that. Cut on top of that windrow instead of driving all the way back. Use our time efficiently, right? Yeah, we'll probably bail. Uh, yeah, we'll probably end up bailing most of this before we wrap it, I think. All these fields. We do have those two other small least fields that we need to cut still, mow. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure what we're going to be putting that into. Eventually we'll start to get into some arable ground once we get some money and we can pick that up. There's a local contracting service that we can hire in to help do different jobs. Um, such as harvesting and things like that. If we need it, um, we don't have a cedar, we don't have any cultivating equipment, none of that. So We should be able to utilize them. Um, I do have like an actual sheet of real, well, from a real life contractor. Um, with like pricing on different jobs. So, that is from Cartech. I got that from him a few months ago. He mentioned it in his Adding and Park series, I think he got it. So he was thinking kind of doing the same thing in a sense. Um, but, yeah, so. Also, please do go check out Cartech if you've never heard of him or seen his videos. Cartech is probably one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, he's a small channel. I think he's yet to reach a thousand subs yet, but he does one heck of a job. I have a guy mowing. I have a guy on a 40-20 right now outside my window. With a mower mowing the roadsides. It's interesting. I don't know if that's my neighbor or not, but that's interesting. Um, but yeah, go check out Cartech. He's a he just started a court farm series. He has an adding and park series that I think is coming to an end. 
Um, and he does a series on the Oaks, too, so... Every series he's done, I've really enjoyed. He does a good job. We'll keep working here. Keep getting this done. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Gotta check my... Probably stop the recording and check it and make sure it's good. <laughs> Uh, audio. Seriously such a pain for me. But, if I can project my voice more. Something I gotta work on. There's things that, as a video creator, I don't do well. But, at least it gives me something to work on, so. It's kind of like these series. It's good when you have something to work on, something to build from, something to learn on, learn. You know, so anyway, yeah, we'll catch up with you guys in a bit. We're just now coming up here on this last row on this uh, big pasture field. We need to get some fuel in the tractor. Um, and then we'll move on to the hay ground. Did get a call from the, uh, local guy that we're working with over at Court Farm. He said that he wants us to just get some cows straight from the animal, uh, dealership that he purchased and bring them right to our farm. And he'll head over, check them out and in person for us, so he was... Buying them online and uh, on an uh, online auction, so. He hasn't even seen them in person yet, but he wants us to grab them for him, and uh, we'll bring them back to our farm. Nine of them. Got more mud to deal with. Yeah, I think I might turn off the mud system. There we go. Throw some fuel on this guy, quick. Then we'll go grab some some more or some uh, calves and get them in and settled into the farm. That off. Like I said, we only can get four or three cows in here at a time. We're gonna be making a few trips, but I'll take you along for the first one. This is a pretty busy road. Also gotta remember to drive on the left side of the road. Take this main road up north, past court. We'll take a little side road. The uh, animal dealer is up on the north side. Nice big field right there. Big grass field. Who knows, maybe someday we'll be able to afford something like that. On the right is Court Farm, and there's the caravan park there. Just on the left. We taking a right up here by the windmill. This map plays a lot bigger than it f than it is. Um, the f fields are pretty small, but the map itself plays really big. I think we need to take this right here. Yeah, I'm 
would assume that this job is probably going to take all of three days in the month to get done. To get everything loaded and wrapped and all that stuff, so. Another farm there, the home farm. Another cattle operation. Sounds like, uh, that uncle of mine is, was pretty respected around the area. So, hopefully we can continue on with his, uh, legacy in the area. Uh, he was just really dedicated to his farm and, you know, never found time to build a family and stuff, and so... Apparently, we were what was next for him, so certainly was not not easy to be a first generation farmer, especially in a new country, but in the U.S. it's ridiculously hard, that's for sure. Who are we? Yes, so this is it with the farmer's market. Larson's Livestock Auction. So this is the auction facility sounds like we got an auction going on as we speak Three cows, female Holsteins that we're picking up. Don't think we can take more. Oh, we can grab one more. Right. Oh, there's just three. Okay. There we go, we got three, so we're going to need to make three more trips down here. Pull up the map quick, maybe there's a quicker way of getting home. Don't think there is. If we took a left out of here, there's a little bit of a dirt track that runs down. Then we'd have to take another dirt track around, so I think actually the way we came is probably the quickest. Without taking a bunch of back roads, so... This map is just gorgeous. There is just detail everywhere you look. There's no empty spot where you're just like, there could have been something there. It's just, it's the best map in FS22. I think it's the best map in all of Farm Sim that I've played, so. I didn't start playing Farm Sim until er, FS19, so. Uh, there may have been some legacy maps that uh, people would argue with me on, but this map, man, what a great job by Oxy. Holy cow. Just incredible. We don't plan to always be a calf heifer farm um, we will eventually be probably moving into either a beef our own beef operation or even uh, like milking cow operation dairy but we'll see don't really have the facilities for it at the moment we only have one main barn there so we'll have to Maybe convert some of the barns that we have into um, some cow barns or purchase another secondary farm to store equipment at and just keep uh, cattle here because we really don't have, I mean the farm's not very big at all, so we'll have to see. The breaking power on this uh, landy here 
not ideal when there's cows in the trailer. Definitely got to be breaking way earlier than you'd think. Another pretty cool thing about this map is that there's a bunch of different, like there's your four main farms, right? So you have your home farm, court farm, um, Elmcroft, and bridge farm, I think, which is this one on the right, kind of coming up. Um, Stone bridge farm, that's the one it's called. But then there's like a bunch of little small areas that you can buy that have working barns and things like that for if you wanted to run like a contracting yard or just anything like that there's he's done a great job there's he he's made this so you can just play it any way you want to fit your play style it's just oh it's so good it really is I'm trying to remember where our turn is it's got to be coming up Uh, here it comes. Right here on the left. Down Cook's Lane. Let's see if we can sneak by the tractor here. I need to open this up. Why can't we open it? Hello? Okay. Do that. Close the gate. We gotta get by first. Close the gate. What is the deal with this trigger right now? Gotta drive by it first, then open it, and then we can unload. A weird trigger. The gate down there on the trailer. Get these guys unloaded. Some little caffies there. They're in. Two more trips up to the auction barn and We'll be all set. Definitely need to get some hay cut for these guys. Um, it'd be nice if I could figure out a way to kind of do a milk replacer type of thing. Oh, we gotta close this gate. Whew, good thing no no cows got out. Close that gate up. Close this one up. And I guess our, our workshop too, I guess. Milk replacer or something, I don't know, but eventually we'll get like calf hutches for those calves. And then, uh, just ding the pole there. Don't worry about it. Or Landy's fine. It's resilient. Anywho, so we'll make these trips up. We'll get these cows loaded. And, uh, yeah, I think, honestly, that's probably going to be it for this episode. Um, we're over that 30 minute mark that I wanted to be, but, uh, yeah. We'll go inside, grab some lunch before we get the rest of the calves, and then. Continue on bailing, and uh, then we'll catch you in the next episode. Probably be doing some bail loading and wrapping and all that good stuff. So, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this series as much as I'm going to. Uh, hopefully, it can be a nice long-running series for us. 
and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode.